the Kentucky and Georgia preview. Mm. Kentucky goes on the road to Georgia in between the hedges. Um, you know, big win for Kentucky last week over Florida. Georgia had a close scare against Auburn. How are you guys feeling about this one? Well, I, I, I get like the, just the generic narratives of this game, right? Georgia, and I use the word weakness, you know, and, and very lightly here, has, has struggled against the run more than they have against the pass. I think a lot of that has to do with the two safeties, including Malachi Starks running around there. Um, but like the, the general narrative is Kentucky runs the ball really well. Yep. They're one of the top teams in the country in explosive plays. And, and most of them are on the ground. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the crazy part. Um, against the Georgia run defense, it has been its weakest part. Love Ray Davis at Kentucky. So therefore, Kentucky's going to be able to hang in the game because they're going to be able to run the ball against Georgia. And I get why people say that, right? Here's where you, you've got to have a little nuance and, and see teams develop. And, and not every week's the same and not every general narrative is, is always the same. Georgia, one of the strengths of Kirby Smart is that his teams get better as the year goes on. Mm -hmm. They develop, right? And now you have young guys in places or, or inexperienced guys in places, not just at quarterback, that are developing and getting better while winning. That is a luxury most teams do not have. Most teams to develop and, and to build that winning identity have to go through losing. Georgia's not having to go through that right now. And you can say about the schedule and this, but they've had some games where it's been a fight. You look at South Carolina at home, they've had to come back. I mean, Carson Beck's winking at the camera at halftime. I believe in that, down 14 to three. You go to Auburn, not playing well, slow start. I guess eventually Georgia's not gonna start slowing a game like that. It just doesn't happen every game like that. But all week, Kirby Smart is running around practice with that bullhorn, screaming about stopping the run and where's the leadership, yeah. okay? Every meeting that that defense is in, they're screaming about stopping the run. Everywhere they go, there's probably signs all in facility. Start fast, finish faster. Stop the run, start the win. Whatever, whatever motto we're saying that's around there. So I don't trust Devin Leary mm -hmm. if Georgia stops the run yeah. to be able to hit big plays in the pass game. I think Georgia's going to slow down Kentucky's run game. Because I think that's Kentucky's only move, and Georgia has the capability to do that. So I, I'm not buying in this whole Kentucky's going to be able to stay in it because they're going to be able to run it down Georgia's throat. And if you're one-dimensional, because a team like Georgia at home between the hedges, I'm not touching the side in this. But last time I checked, the over-under was 40. What's it at? 49. 49. I got it at 48 and a half. I can't believe it went up. Yeah. I, I don't think... Kentucky's going to be able to run the ball as easy as what people are thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think Carson Beck and Georgia, and I like Kentucky's defense, right? Lad McConkey's getting healthier. Mm -hmm. I think they're starting to find themselves in the run game a little bit. And that Georgia offensive line is elite. It is elite, especially in pass pro. So I, I like Georgia big in this Look, game. Look, this has to be the game that Devin Leary plays like we know he's capable of playing. Last season at NC State was a disappointment. So far early this year, it hasn't looked great, but they're undefeated and he's been relying on that run game. Now, he doesn't need to be Peyton Manning, but he needs to take advantage of the shots that he's going to get because Georgia, like you said, is going to load the box, especially after the way Auburn had success on the ground last week. Georgia's gonna load the box and make Devin Leary beat them. He has to be able to take some of those shots. The identity of the game plan could still be Hey, we want to run the ball for Kentucky. That's oh no, it's got it's got to be. But it's to open be. that up, Devin Leary has to have some success. I don't know if that means taking a couple shots early, even if you miss the shots, just showing Georgia that you're going to take them. Maybe play action early on downs, first and ten, second and eight, things like that. Um, this has to be the game where that happens. Blaine, for you, 14 and a half right now is the line. Is that too many? You saw Georgia up close and personal last week against Auburn is 14 and a half too much or when they go back to Sanford Stadium this week do they just do they just roll Kentucky I don't think it's too much but uh, I would definitely buy it down at 13 and a half make it a two touchdown game this is the thing that gets me about uh, about this game if you'd watch the Auburn and Georgia game Auburn's getting east and west a lot so I'll on the sideline Kentucky's a north and south running football team uh -huh. it's hard to beat Georgia between like between they love counter like, and it's, power it's really it's hard run. it's really hard to beat them through the line of scrimmage and what else did auburn do you to beat teams like this that are that good on defense your quarterback has to be able to run you got to be able to run because that's the hardest things for a defense to do for account for that guy as well well it's a hat for a hat it's a hat it's for a hat true, and 11, you saw 11. peyton thorne kind of gas him with that had a 70 yard run that's not who devin leary is he has nine carries for negative 20 yards that's a the, pro style on, on, on the year so if you can't do that and, and you're not getting huge runs, 
Georgia's going to start sitting on you. They're going to start strangling you, and that's what I kind of see happen. Ray Davis is an NFL running back, but you can only do so much against this team. I'm still waiting on this Georgia offense to really come along. See, that, that really come along. Well, well, I, well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, we talked all offseason about, hey, you know, Georgia hasn't had a bunch of elite wide receivers, right? Even when Stetson was there and they were winning national championships, Dominic Lovett comes over from Missouri. All right, he's got 20 receptions. He's under 200 yards on, on, on the year. He's got no touchdowns. Longest reception's 33 yards. And we can talk about injuries and all this stuff, but this, this is the reality of where it is. Ra Ra Thomas comes over from Mississippi State, guy they expected a lot of. Nine catches, 167 yards, zero touchdowns. You have zero combined touchdowns between Dominic Lovett and Ra Ra Thomas. Rosemary Jack Saint, he's only got one. Brock Bowers has three receiving touchdowns. The tight ends have four, all right? Makai Muse has a receiving touchdown, right? And then you have uh, Arian Smith that has a receiving touchdown. Now, Lad McConkey's been hurt. Once Lad McConkey comes back and he's full, and at full strength, they're not just using him in spot duty, I think you're going to see it help more and more. Something else we're excited about, good skin care, mm. all right? You got to take care of yourself. We talk about this all the time with multiple ones of our sponsors. You got to look good to play good. You got to feel good to go out there and be at your best, all right? And it's no secret that we're all loving the Genucel Dark Spot Corrector. Oh, yeah. Okay? It's out there. We all use it. You got dark spots. You're running around, you know, looking like a Dalmatian or a twister board. You need some help, okay? All right, you don't want Corella DeVille showing up and you need a hundred other your friends. You know, like, we want you to look good, all right? So, whether that's dark spots, liver spots, sun spots, and it works instantly. I mean, instantly, and they're so confident. Our friends at Janie Cell are so confident in their products. You can try them for yourself completely risk-free. And if you don't see results in one day, uno dia. I, th- I really well think done. that's how you say it. Well done. Right. You're going to get your money back. You get that de- dinero back in your pocket. Wow. All right? So it's simple. Go to genucell.com slash booster. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash booster and start looking years, even decades younger tomorrow. Yeah, they cracked the code. Say hello to the best skin you've ever had at genucell.com slash booster. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash booster. But I do got to say this. I, I went back and watched the armor game again. Carson Beck's still in a good ball, but he's got to put the ball in better spots. Mm. I mean, you, you, consistently, with the time he has. Mm-hmm. He's not having, there is no, there, he's sitting back there clapping, man. Bang, 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 bang. Like in the intermediate, he's getting the ball out on time and putting it in good spots. But, but in, in, he is, for them to win the games at the end that they're going to have to win, you're going to have to put the ball in the tight windows, right? And I don't know if you're going to have the amount of time that you're having right now as good as Georgia's offensive line is. But at some point, this wide receiver room has got to wake their ass up a little bit and, and start being able to, to, to put the ball in the end zone. So it's, again, once they figure that out, I, I think they'll be in a better spot. But, I, I mean, somebody's got to come on now between Dominic and Rob. You just can't get, if you're Kentucky, you just can't get beat by Brock Bowers, guys. Good luck. I know it's easier said than done. Good luck. You just can't get beat by him. What Someone Dan, else beat uh, me. What did Dan Patrick say? You can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. Yeah. And if you want to say, we talked a ton of Texas A&M, Alabama the past two days, too, if, if people are like, well, y'all didn't mention that. I think that. you'll see Kentucky with that lack of quarterback run you're talking about. They'll supplement, or at least they should try and supplement, with screen game, you know, middle screen and tunnel screen. A little South, bit Carolina like South, hurt Carolina. Carolina. South Carolina hurt Georgia South Carolina badly. scored on that tunnel that. screen, and that's all well and good. But that can't be the only trick. And right? the thing you about have this to call that the right time. This isn't a, a super high Q Georgia defense that we're used to seeing football smarts-wise. It's not as good as a tackling defense that we're used to seeing with Georgia. So there are, there are holes there. there. Georgia does make mistakes, but if you're Kentucky, you have to capitalize on the mistakes. You have to capitalize on them early. Well, I, I think you said it best. I, Georgia doesn't run sideline to sideline as well. As well, yeah. As, as they did the past couple. What's interesting is some of Auburn's big runs were actually still up the middle, but it was off of it was off of east sweep. to west yep. jet sweep pulls. For sure. With the well, court. you had you had them spread thin. If if I can spread you out and make you you know thin every quadrant, then yeah. I can in the middle. Yeah. Obviously, um, you know the more the more out out uh, outflank you, the wider you got to get, and that's yeah. that's when I hit you in the middle. Oh hey YouTube, I didn't see you sitting there. Uh, if you get a chance, make sure you hit that like button. If you're not subscribed to the show. What are you doing with your life? And please turn on the notification bell. Ring that thing like Quasimodo, but with triangle face.